Well, oh boy, we got some more comic creators that are making a fool out of themselves on social media because they're complaining about money. Look, everybody loves money. We need money. That's how we survive. But don't go on social media and complain when you're, it's clear that the reason you're complaining underscores that you don't understand how money works. So in today's op-ed, we're going to talk about the golden rule of business, which we always talk about because it's important, why comic creators are getting hung up on not getting paid enough and exactly what they need to do about it. And yes, this time we're going to name names. So stay tuned. See you in three. And welcome back to Comical Opinions. Uh, this is an op-ed talking about why comic artists don't deserve more money. Yes, it's a clickbaity title. Sometimes you got to do that to get the attention to get people drawn in. But the message is important. The message is valid. Stick with me. So if you're a comic artist, and really this applies to artists in general, could even apply to uh, writers as well. I'm sorry to give you the bad news. You don't deserve more money. And I think the key word here that people are getting hung up on is deserve. Why? Because it's simple. If we go by the golden rule of business, and we've mentioned that multiple times on pretty much every op-ed since this channel started, to make money, you have to give customers what they already want, underscore the word already, you have to give it to them where they already are, again, underscore the word already, and you have to give it to them at a fair price. Now, the fair price is the piece we're going to focus on in this op-ed today. If you decide that you want to make a living with your art, you don't decide how much money you make. The market decides. Who is the market? The market is collectors. The market is the LCS shops, anybody who's asking for commissions. That is the market. It's the people who have the money to give you. You don't decide how much you can charge and get. The market decides. You can ask for more, and the more you ask for, the eventually you're going to find that upper limit. And that's going to decide how much you can make because the market says either that upper limit is just enough or it's too high or you can go higher. Your job as the artist is to find that upper limit. How much is my art worth to the people who are going to buy it? You don't get to decide whether or not it's worth $500, $5,000 or $50. The market decides because the market is the one that's willing to pay for it. So since the market has the money, the market determines how much you get. These are basic principles. If you're going to be a freelance artist full time, you have to understand these things. So if you intend to survive from the money that you make off your art, you must, must, must get this point. You don't decide how much you get paid. The market decides. I've been struck by two recent examples on both ends of the spectrum. One in the very, very positive and one very recently on the negative. So we're going to talk about the first one, obviously, is Mr. Jim Lee. Now, if you have been following along with uh, Jim Lee's exploits over at DC Comics, as currently I think he's the president is his current title, he's doing a terrible job. He is 100% responsible for the downfall of DC's sales and quality and everything else that's going on at DC lately. Jim Lee recently made some noise because it was made public knowledge about his commission rates. And what he's doing is he's saying, well, I'll do 11 by 17, I'll do a 9 by 12, I'll even do headshots. And just for the headshot, which is three and a quarter by seven inches, is $1,000. All the way up to the 11 by 17, which is as much as $35,000, depending on the detail and backgrounds or what have you. That is a lot of money. You do two or three 11 by 17s, that'll cover pay for people to survive off of for an entire year on two or three drawings. That's, for him, phenomenal. Now, the reason that drew some ire, I guess would you, you would say, some people were saying, well, if you're charging $35,000 for an 11 by 17, Jim Lee, you're taking money away from other artists who need that money more than you do. That is a foolish statement, and I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, the other side of that spectrum says, go ahead and get it. Get your money. Get your bag. You earned it. You are a legend from an artistic perspective. And Jim Lee is. Did fantastic work at Marvel. He went off and helped start Image. He created Wildstorm. He is a legend in the industry from an artistic perspective. His current management style at DC is horrendous, but if you're going to talk about strictly his art and his capabilities, he's doing phenomenally speaking. Go back to the golden rule. Give people what they already want, where they already are, at a fair price. The market decides what is fair. And according to the market, they believe an 11 by 17 at upwards of $35,000 is fair. Why? Because people pay for it. People are spending that money. That means 
high value collectors, people who are super duper in love with Jim Lee's work will pay that amount of money. And so the market decides how much he's willing to, he can charge. He can ask for more. Now, if he started saying, well, I'm going to charge a million dollars for an 11 by 17, they'll probably say no. So there is an upper limit. It's not infinite. But the market will sustain a $35,000 11 by 17. So if the market is willing to tolerate 11 by 17, then he can ask for it. He can ask for it more. The market decides the cap. And so you get people who are kind of on both sides of the spectrum because somehow he shouldn't ask for as much as he's worth, which is patently ridiculous. Ask for what you're worth. Absolutely. Everybody should ask for what they're worth. But the market decides what they're willing to pay. So you find that upper limit. You go over it market stops paying. If you stay right at it or below it, the market will pay. And that determines the value of your art. Now, when I say value, I'm not talking about your value as a person. I'm not saying that you have no self-worth as an individual, that you have a soul and a heart and everything else. I'm talking about the value of your art to the people who are willing to pay for art. Okay. So we got some reactions. I think by and large, most people fell on the side of if he's worth it, he should charge it. And so be it. Now, the people who say, well, wait a minute, if somebody's going to pay $35,000 for one piece of art from Jim Lee, they could help fund the artists from 10 different arenas of the, of the comics industry. They can fund artists who really need it because they just haven't had work in a while. Those artists may need the money, but the market decides who gets the money and it's not those artists. So let's take a look at another example. And this is the, or the other extreme of that spectrum. And I'm going to pick a name here. I'm not going to like it, but it's the truth. Jim Bartel. So Jen Bartel, if you're not familiar, is a, an illustrator and an artist. She's most recently known for doing a lot of sensational She-Hulk covers at Marvel. Now, Jen Bartel, I would say foolishly, took to social media and decided to make a big stink about not making enough money, particularly because some of her work showed up in Marvel Snap, even though she is work for hire. That was part of her contract. She agreed to that contract. Presumably she needed the money, presumably she needed the work or wanted to get some exposure. Whatever the reason, Marvel is not breaking any laws. They're not working adverse to their contract, but Jen Bartel decided to go on social media and make a stink. And there's one tweet in particular that I think really got under my skin and precipitated this video, which is her statement here, which is there are a few times I asked for even a small pay raise over a four year period. Pay raise is a weird statement to make and I'll explain that in a second. What would you do if your employer never gave you even a modest salary bump in nearly half a decade? Well, I can tell you for an example, there are plenty of people who are in that situation, especially if you work for government state agencies that I happen to know personally, there are some people who haven't had a pay raise in a decade. So uh, I don't know why she thinks this is uh, specific to artists, but oh well. Uh, second, pay raise assumes that you're an employee. Jen Bartel is not an employee of Marvel. She is a contract worker. She is work for hire. She engages in a contract. She signed the contract saying, these are the rules and regulations. I will create art for you. And here is what you can do with it based upon our mutual agreement. She's not receiving the salary. This is not a pay raise. So she's already using terms to kind of assume or imply that there's some kind of collective bargaining mistreatment going on here, but that's absolutely not the case. So let's talk about why she may not be getting as much money as she wants. And if you go, go to the article that's included in the newsletter, which is included down below, you'll see the first four covers of Sensational She-Hulk, all of which drawn by Jim Bartel. This is a review channel, so we're going to review these covers. They suck, okay? They are technically proficient as far as the characters look like the characters, but the backgrounds are non-existent. It is very soft. It's very weak. It tells you nothing about the characters. The only thing it does probably pretty well is it draws your eye to her face, but that's about it. There is nothing engaging or energetic about these covers. They are basic illustrations that I, I think the way I put it is they look like they belong in the back of a children's coloring book. I mean, that's what this looks like. This looks like the cover of a coloring book. So if you are taking comic books that are in a superhero action publishing arena, and you're trying to direct them at people who buy superhero action comics, these covers absolutely do not qualify. And the art on them is, to be honest, you know, pretty basic. I mean, this, these look like illustrations, not even just action. There's not nothing teasing you about what's in the comic. It's just showing you the characters in an assortment of poses. So, I mean, it is the, the comic cover equivalent of beige. I mean, it's really, there's nothing to this here. So the reason I'm picking on Jen for this, and, and if you're going to get mad at me for doing so, please 
you're welcome to it. DM me, sure, yell at me, whatever you want. But this is the this is the underscored problem here. Jim Lee is an iconic artist for things that he's done, like Image Comics, like Wildstorm. Those X-Men number one covers are iconic. You can recognize them from a mile away and decades later. These covers from Jim Bartel, which are on the screen if you're watching the video, nobody is going to even remember who drew them or why. There is nothing about this that in, that encourages you or excites you about comics in any way, shape, or form. So what's the lesson here? The lesson is if you want more money, you have to make art that gets the readership that has the money and is willing to pay for it. You have to get them excited. You have to draw art that they want. I can tell you pretty much for a fact that people who are excited about Jim Lee's covers, Jim Lee's version of Batman, Jim Lee's version of X-Men are absolutely not going to be excited by this art in any way, shape, or form. They are, these are not must-haves. These are not things that are make, going to make you go out of your way to find them, that a collector has to trip over themselves to find and feel like they're lucky if they find it in the, the, the dollar bin somewhere. It's just not going to happen. And so the lesson here is if you want more money, you don't deserve more money. You have to earn it. And the way you earn it, at least within comics, is you have to draw art that people want, that people with a lot of money get excited for. Jim Bartel's work here, not going to meet that grade. They're not going to meet it. Jim Lee, yes. Jim Bartel, no. So even though I'm picking on Jim Bartel, she decided to, to throw her grievances up on social media. She's making it public knowledge. I felt it was appropriate to address it publicly. And that's what we're doing. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you're a creative person and you want to make money being creative, you must learn this lesson. Give customers what they already want, where they already are, and at a fair price. Who determines that fair price? You don't. The market does. And so if you want more money, you have to make your art more valuable to the market that's willing to pay for it. It really is just that simple. There is no other way. Please learn this lesson. So. I hope you found this op-ed helpful. If you are an artist or an aspiring artist, please make sure that you understand that if you're gonna make money off your art, you have to learn basic business acumen. You have to learn these basic business rules because it's just not gonna work. You can't just be creative and the money's gonna come. That's Hollywood nonsense, it doesn't work that way. So if you wanna read the full article and also get a close-up look at these, some of these covers, click on the link in the description below because that's a link to the newsletter. The newsletter will also include links to all of our re reviews from last week, including our pick of the week, which shouldn't be a surprise to anybody if you've been following the channel. And it'll also show you the re reviews we have coming up this week. So thank you very much for joining. And please stay tuned through the outro for more reviews and videos just like this one.